In this video, we're going to focus on three different or begin our discussion of three different claims of frequency association and causal. Because causal claims are both very important and also somewhat more difficult, we're going to, I'm going to move that to the next video and only focus on frequency and association claims in this particular uh, discussion. With frequency claims, we're looking at how often or how significant um, a particular variable is. You know, so most students don't know when news is fake. Um, only 15% of US adults now smoke. The COVID-19 uh, crisis has already left too many children hungry in America. Global emotions, which countries are the most happy, sad, or angry. Each of these articles is making claims about a particular frequency of, of events in that. Um, when I've asked you to complete the divergent association task, um, which measures verbal creativity, um, and we can, see, we can look at your performance on our test one and test two. These are average scores uh, for spring of 2020. And, you know, what we have is just a, a general statement about what happened here, the frequency with which something happens. Association claims are a little bit more more interesting and more complicated. An association claim argues that one level of a variable is associate, associated with another variable. So we have at least two measure or measured variables, and those variables are said to correlate. So for example, coffee drinking is linked to less depression in, in women coffee drinking being the measured variable, um, less depression being a second measured variable. Infant IQ tests found to predict scores in school. New study links exercise to higher pay. No link between late night eating and child obesity. So here we have a series of different kinds of associations, either positive, negative, or zero between the two, two things. We often see these kinds of verbs used for association claims, links at higher risk for, is associated with, is correlated with, prefers, may predict, is tied to, goes with. When we're looking at a scattered plot, um, we're interested in a couple of different kinds of things. Um, you know, we're interested in, for example, the, what happens on the x-axis, so sitting, number of hours per day, what's on the y-axis, the total MTL thickness. Um, we're interested in the correlation. So for example, this particular correl correlation is negative 0.37. So we'll talk about this as a negative correlation. And you can see that the, in this case, the slope you know, tends to go down from across our x-axis or you know, x variable. Uh, each of these dots 
refers to or is refers to a single data point or a single person, for example, who sits a particular number of hours per day and has a, a particular thickness to their MTL. With positive associations, we're seeing that the slope goes in the opposite direction. Again, we're seeing you know, each of these dots refers to a particular person. Here's our x-axis and our y-axis. And we might say the percentage of deep talk is related to well-being, okay, or associated. Our correlation here is, is 0.28, not all that strong, okay? Um, you know, it's probably significant, but not something that you're gonna write home, you know, to your mom about. Negative correlation. This is a fairly strong correlation for psychology, for behavioral ideas. Our correlation of minus 0.4, and you can see that the slope goes in the opposite direction. Each of these data points refers to an, an entire state's population. And we might talk about that as there is a relationship between a state's average level of extroversion and the degree of mountainousness in that state, such that people in more mountainous states tend to be more introverted. And zero populations. This here is not exactly zero, but it is so low that it probably is not statistically significant. Um, and what we're seeing is the, we have a correlation of negative 0.16, our x-axis, our y-axis, our slope, and this is attendance at a particular game based on the number of wins that they had. And what we might say is attendance at Pirates games is only weekly associated, is only weekly predicted by wins and negatively such that attendance increases slightly when they're not winning. We'll come back to this later in the course as we're talking about why that might, might happen because that's not what happens you know, in every, every uh, state. Here we're seeing a cor correlation between motor or motor vehicle or between two causes of death across time. And you see that in general, the correlate or the correlation for a per for motor vehicle crashes is negative. Okay if we're looking at time by, by deaths, so that we are having fewer deaths from motor vehicle crashes right now for kids, adolescents, and young adults, where for firearms, it was stable for most of this part or most of this century until the last five or so years when it began to creep up. Now, another way that we can talk about correlations is using bar graphs. So here we're looking at uh, the, the average deaths per 100,000 for unvaccinated, vaccinated, and boosted uh, people during a particular period. Um, and we see this particular relationship that there are more deaths per 100,000 for unvaccinated people than for people who are either vaccinated or boosted. Um, if we're thinking about making predictions based on associations, they can be helpful. 
And in general, the stronger the association, the more accurate our prediction. Um, both positive and negative associations can help us make pred uh, predictions. Zero associations can't. Now, we can predict. That doesn't mean that there is a causal relationship between these two, two variables. And with that, I'm going to leave you and we'll be and move to our next video where we'll talk about uh, causal uh, claims. Take care.